Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to WMSD Podcast, episode number 79. I am your host, Sayed Quadri. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share the audio links. Uh, here are our cast members for tonight. We've got Editor-in-Chief Ziggler. What up, Ziggler? And how was the fight? Yeah, what up? Uh, yeah, Robert, Robert Whitaker uh, just won, former champ. Uh, gonna look like he's going to face the champ soon to, uh, to win his title back. So we'll see. Yeah, Fight Island. And of course, as always, we have the Orange Cassidy of the group, the man himself. It's Cam. What up, Cam? Uh... Another week, another podcast. And this week, guys, it's it's a pretty packed episode. We're, we're going to be discussing a wide range of stuff from uh, from some wrestling to a lot of the San Diego and Justice Con stuff that's going on and a lot of stuff that's happening in the sports world. So without wasting any time, let's get right into part one of WMSC podcast. Yeah, baseball is back. Yay, baseball is back for those who care. I mean, sports in general, it's like so dry. I literally had to tune in to watch baseball. I watch playoffs, but I had to watch a regular baseball game. And the NBA is back. Yep, uh, we will be discussing that as well. Uh, really excited for games to start in a few days. Uh, let's talk about something that kind of mixes sports and sports entertainment, I guess. So, Adam Cole, baby, uh, appeared on The Pat McAfee Show. And I'm a huge fan of uh, Pat McAfee Show. Uh, I mean, the inspiration for this podcast, I would say, kind of draws from him because i want our show to uh get to a level where we can be like pat uh pat mcafee's show like i love the way he has it laid out with the uh, with the boys and the way he talks about sports and the way it's like a very free-flowing conversation it's a really awesome show they talk about uh you know everything sports and just some other stuff that's you know relevant so Adam Cole was a guest on Pat McAfee's show, and Pat and Adam Cole have kind of a feud in NXT. Uh, you know, Pat is kind of uh, a guest commentator at, at points for WWE. He does some stuff for them. So he had him on the show. They were doing a nice little interview at first. Uh, but later on, um, Pat started egging on Adam Cole for some odd reason, like, I usually watch Pat's interviews with other athletes, and he's very respectable. Uh, you know, he has great conversation with them. But for some reason, Pat, like, kept, like, uh, condescendingly insulting Adam Cole. Um, when Adam Cole uh, would say, like, he's the king of NXT, uh, Pat would make fun of the fact that he called himself king of NXT. Um, he would call out... He literally said, Pat, back. this is where they're confrontation sort of escalated uh pat mcafee told adam cole uh, a lot of people compare you to sean michaels but obviously you'll never be as good as sean michaels and that's when like it kind of started to build up adam cole was like whoa 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 what are you talking about you know i respect sean michaels but i'm gonna be the first adam cole and you know i'm like and he's like i'm gonna be better than sean michaels and then um the conversation keeps, you know, boiling to a point where uh, uh, Pat uh, Adam actually calls out Pat McAfee because Pat McAfee was a punter in NFL, and he's like, uh, "You shouldn't be calling me out. You're you were literally a punter on a football team, uh, and stuff like that." And then uh, Pat, this was the final boiling point for Adam Cole. Pat McAfee called him and he uh, called him out for having uh, the Undisputed Era help him for everything. Uh, and he was like, oh, Undisputed Era, those people are way more talented than you. You surround yourself with more talented people. And, and then he was like, hey, but that's business. You know, that's business. That's smart. You know, you're kind of short. Uh, and then that's, that, that was it. Like when he, when he called Adam Cole short, Adam Cole literally flipped off like he was like he threw the mic down and started cursing at pat he's like fuck you say huh fuck you man and then uh 
uh, one of Adam's, sorry, Pat's uh, co-hosts came uh, near Adam Cole, and then he got shoved, and he's like, "Don't touch me." And then he, ju- Adam Cole, just stormed off. And as soon as this happened, a lot of people were debating: Is this a shoot? Is this a work? Uh, and I mean, I personally like was really enjoying it like it it was kind of surreal seeing something like that at first it kind of felt like it was a shoot uh maybe it was a shoot but i think 95% chance it was probably a work i'm leaning more towards work and i think what's going to happen is since pat and adam cole had this kind of feud in NXT i think they might continue that even more if they mention this on next week at NXT then this is definitely a work and they're going to set up something with Adam Cole and Pat McAfee, which it seems like it even has some mainstream attention to it because there was people that don't even watch wrestling talking about uh, Adam Cole and trending Adam Cole on Twitter talking about this incident. So, yeah, it was uh, it was crazy to watch, so... Uh, let's get your guys' thoughts on it. Cam, what were your thoughts on the Pat McAfee and Adam Cole scuffle? Uh, they, you did, like you mentioned, they do have a bit of history with each other. Adam doesn't like Pat, and Pat sometimes eggs him on and riffs on him. You've seen you know, some of the stuff at some of the takeovers where Pat does cameos. You've seen the, uh, some of you have probably seen those watch along things that they do for pay per views where Adam and Pat have a bit of interaction and Adam just yells at him. Like one of my favorite ones is the SummerSlam interaction where, where Pat asks, why don't you, why, why, don't you want some ice cream? Adam's like, I don't want any ice cream. Let Jethro get you some ice cream. I don't want any ice cream. So, yes, there's a little bit of animosity towards them, even if it's a bit faked. <laughs> For this little uh, McAfee show thing, it ha- it looks real, but it's like it's one of those things where it's like, oh, wow, this is actually really real. But in reality, it, what, it really is, and they, they probably just put it all together. So, yeah, it's probably a work. If they mention it on NXT next week, then, yes, it's a work, even if it has... Even if yeah, it was a lot more explicit with Adam just cursing him out, like I'm not expecting them to show it because of the uh, because of them having to censor everything. Yeah, they can always bleep out the the FUs and all that. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited for them to dive into this. Uh, it, the best work sometimes is 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 something that you feel like is a shoot. So. Uh, this is probably the most organic uh, sort of build-up WWE ha- had in a while, if indeed this is a work which, uh, like I said, you know, 95%, it's, it pro- it's probably a work. And uh, Ziggler, your thoughts on uh, this scuffle? Yeah, I think this is obviously a work. I mean, when I first saw it, I was kind of iffy, and then I've been watching it a few times, like, uh, okay, this is obviously a work, like, this is Adam Cole playing his character. Like I, I know when he's playing his character, and this is this is him. Like they're just working everybody, and it's good. It's good publicity and stuff. Uh, it was trending on Twitter, I think, and Adam Cole was trending on Twitter too. He said uh, so. It's good for him. It's good for Pat McAfee, and you said there might be like working with something. Like, do you think they're gonna have a match? Like that'd be kind of weird. Pat, okay, you know like what's has funny? Pat coming up. Has Pat ever trained in wrestling? I think he has, because he was wrestling in, like, the uh, uh, performance center. And also, Pat McAfee was joking that when he was drunk, he uh, purchased a real ring to his house, and he trained with John Cena's trainer. So I think he, they might be teasing it. I mean... To me, it's random, Take but you guys, up. but you guys said that they had like beef, like, like in the past. Is that true? I'm not. I, I didn't follow that in the past if they had any beef or not. But if they did, then I guess make the match. I don't know. I just think it's. I just think it's really random that 
he just goes off on his podcast. So, I mean, I guess I don't think really much for Adam Cole to do unless they put him in the main roster, which I hope they do not put him on the main roster. So, if this happens, I would take over them. Fine. Take over 30. Let's do it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Adam Cole has done everything possible in NXT. And I guess, you know, finishing a feud with Pat McAfee, because, you know, Pat has had a few con- confrontations with him, even in NXT. I think Pat interfered in one of his matches in Indiana's house, house show at NXT like a year ago or something like that. So, I mean, I guess it's it, plus it has some mainstream attention to it, which WWE all, always loves. So something cool for fans to see out of the normal. Uh, speaking of SummerSlam, um, I wanted to discuss a quick topic with you, with you guys. Would you guys prefer SummerSlam to be a one night event like it has been for the past, you know, forever? You know, ne- it's never. I don't think it's ever been a two night event. Or would you guys like them to split it into two nights like they did with WrestleMania? Uh, it's an interesting conversation because uh, if they do split it in two nights. Uh, that means they're probably preparing for something big to go down, like some big matchup to go down. Um, but the argument against that is a lot of the uh, wrestlers that were going to be on the show are are not going to be on. Roman Reigns isn't going to be at SummerSlam. Uh, Brock Lesnar isn't there. Uh, Edge, unfortunately, is injured. He's not going to be there. So there's a lot of big names missing. So... I personally don't think they'll make SummerSlam two nights just because of the lack of star power there is. Also, I would kind of like them to do something different with SummerSlam this year. Um, You know, SummerSlam doesn't really feel like a summer show, you know. I think to give give it more of a summer vibe, they should uh, do something where they wrestle... Uh, in the outdoors like they can wrestle at a beach or something like bash at the beach or something like that um so ziggler what are your thoughts on SummerSlam being a two-night event potentially and maybe wrestling in an outdoor setting yeah uh it should not be a two-night event good god i i know SummerSlam is supposed to be like more like the big four pay-per-views than it is but these past few years SummerSlam has just been boring as fuck I do not want two nights of it. Um, we they should just have like seven or eight good quality matches on the card, and that's it. I mean, we want quality, not quantity. Take note from NXT uh, takeovers. They have like five matches on the card, and their takeovers are always the best thing about wrestling nowadays. So, and for SummerSlam. I don't know. I just, I just don't like. I'm not a big fan of SummerSlam, but it would be interesting to see if it was on a beach. But I don't think the beaches are open at Florida. I mean, they open, but I'm pretty sure they they close re- pretty recently because of all because of the cases of COVID spiking up. So I mean, it's a nice thought, but I don't think it's gonna happen because of COVID. Yeah, I mean, there's no. Uh, even if it's on a beach, I don't think there's gonna be a crowd, but it would be like a cool outdoor setting. I don't know. But I guess I mean, uh, I mean GC GCW is doing crowds outdoors, so. Ah, uh, yeah, true. Plus, know. I mean, let's be real here. It'll probably be at the performance center. Sadly. Oh, it's it's definitely gonna be at the performance center, and those shows just blend together. So SummerSlam's I... just gonna be another. Everything's been blending together since March. Yeah. Yeah. SummerSlam's just gonna be another show that we're gonna talk about for a day. Yeah, like, wrestling, I mean, not wrestling, but, like, WWE shows had a problem of blending together already a bit. Yeah. Now with the Performance Center, it's, like, it doesn't matter. Like, it, I mean, I think the best show to come out of the Performance Center shows was TakeOver in Your House. Right, exactly. Y'all with me on that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have to yeah. agree. Wrestling-wise, definitely, yeah. In Your yeah. House or Money in the Bank, probably. Mm. Yeah. That, that, the money in the bank matches I did not like <laughs> or the match because it was one match <laughs> well True. mine is Otis winning the briefcase 
I forgot he was still the briefcase holder until until Friday. Oh yeah, thanks for reminding. I, me. I forgot he was still a thing. <laughs> me too. And then I saw somewhere on my feet like, oh, Otis is back. I'm like, oh shit, I forgot he was. A, I forgot he was a holder for Money in the Bank. I was like, y'all should have just gave it to someone. Else. Y'all should have just gave it to AJ or Alistair Black. The sad part is he'll probably cash it in to become a tag team champion. That's oh my god, can so you imagine? messed up. That's so messed up. Like I mean, you, like you don't like no one's done it with the uh, mid card belts. Like you could do that in the video games. I mean, the Fiend Bray Wyatt's probably gonna win at SummerSlam, and Otis is in no way gonna beat the Fiend. <laughs> if he does, then good god. The internet, the internet will would, cave in on itself. Yeah. Will cave in on itself. Otis beat The Fiend in 2020. Imagine That's, that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be crazy. And, and uh, Cam, uh, what are you thinking about the SummerSlam potential of tonight or maybe a beach event? They can't do the uh, beaches because they're probably closed. They'll probably they can probably go to like a closed set, but I don't know about I don't know if they're going to have a big venue for that. They should have thought ahead and they should have booked a uh, SummerSlam island like UFC did the UFC Fight Island. That would have been pretty cool, like a quarantine fight on the beach. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Actually have the ring on the beach. Right, exactly. But, but Florida is hot as hell, so that's might not, that might not be the way to go. Yeah, true. That is very true. Yeah, and uh, real quick, uh, did you guys uh, get a chance to check out this week's uh, uh, episode of NXT? Uh, sorry, uh, AEW? Um, it was pretty cool seeing uh, Eddie Kingston uh, debut. Well, not quite debut. I, I think this was like a one-off match for him against Cody. Like, that match was really intense. And uh, I've heard of any Eddie Kingston, but, like, I've never, like, seen him wrestle or cut a promo. Like, the dude is intense. Like, I get the hype. Like, I totally get it. Uh, he was pretty awesome. And hashtag sign Eddie Kingston was trending on Twitter Um Pretty much the entire day after uh, AEW. So, Ziggler, what, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, he's definitely an older indie star. He's like 38. Somebody's I mean, been doing this for a long time. He was in PWG like in 2005 and stuff. And he, I've been watching him for a little while. Uh, he was, he's in, He shows up GCW once in a while. And he, he is good. Don't get me wrong, he is good. And... Um, yeah, the the opener for the show was good. Uh, that thumbtack spot, uh, I love thumbtack spots, and I was I was pretty dope. That power bomb into it, and if this is like a one off, then I don't know. Yeah, it most likely is a one off because isn't Cody facing another indie star? Uh, He's facing a war horse next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just think. I mean, I hope Eddie Kingston does more in AEW because he can bring a lot because he's a good promo artist and he can wrestle. So, yeah, I hope, I hope he uh, makes another uh, makes another show, makes another. Yeah. yeah, he's one of those guys that has a very like defined character. Like he talks with a lot of conviction. Like whatever he says, you like totally believe. Yeah. He's like a very believable. And he character. pretty much, like, told his story, like, <laughs> pretty much in that promo. Like, he grew up with alcoholics and junkies and stuff. So, so, right. And I like... So, we already, we already know about him now. Yeah. And I like the premise of the TNT title so far. Like, I get it. Like, kind of giving chance to people who wouldn't get a opportunity, kind of. Um, and I like it. And I like him defending it every week. TNT, every week so yeah that's that's nice like the john cena open challenge mm-hmm. yeah and it's not against the roster most a lot of times it's against people yeah. outside of AEW. do you so think little... is do you think like any like nd star is going to take it off him though no. if they if they sign a contract so yeah. like for, for example if uh 
I don't know, let's say Marty Scroll, uh, like all of a sudden joins oh, AEW, yeah. <laughs> he would win the title for sure. Because, you know, he would appear only if he signed a contract. In my he opinion. signed a big contract with ROH, like, last year, I think, so. Oh, right. So, exactly. Like, if... And like, he's that, a booker there, too, so he's he's not going anywhere. And it sucks because ROH... Has ROH done any shows since the quarantine began? I don't think so. Yeah, that sucks. He's, he's just being wasted yeah. there now, but... I mean, I think it was a mistake that he signed there in the first place. He's already done everything there. Yeah, I think that was think kind it, of a mistake. Yeah, he should have signed with All Elite or NXT. True. And Cam, your thoughts on uh, AEW? This is my first exposure to Eddie Kingston. And I'm impressed. I do like his promos. Like, he's one of those few talents that seems real and yeah you can get behind them and it's like i can actually relate to what you're saying or i hope that they sign you put the world title on you and, and have you face everybody on the roster because you're good you're good but i do like this open challenge idea where you're not facing every where cody isn't facing everyone on the roster He's mainly facing random uh, indie indie names on the roster. I'm not on the roster. Random indie names from around the from around the world. Has he faced anybody outside of the U.S. yet? Probably not. But oh wait, you can't you can't do anything in the U.S. Well, yeah, during COVID, to. yeah. I mean, but I don't know how long kind of limited. Keep doing. Like yeah, 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 but. I don't know how long they're going to keep uh, keep going with this, but it's not bad for what I'm seeing. Like, somebody will probably take it off from once uh, someone signs. What do you guys think I about... I think th- after... I think after, like, his feud with Darby Allen, I think Brian Cage may take it off of him. That'd be a good choice. Yeah, Brian, uh, Brian Cage. Or what do you guys think about Lance Archer? Um uh, Maybe circling back towards the TNT Championship or Brian Cage, like one of those two guys. It's a it's a coin toss type of thing. Yeah, like, well, Lance Archer lost the first title match for so against you can't Cody. Do... So it's like if we do him against Cody again, it's kind of recycling it. Like, it's it, it it's going to take time for him to lose. I think so. Might be by the end of the year he loses against to like a uh, Brian Cage maybe or could be Darby Allen who knows. Yeah, I would love to see Cody and Darby Allen again. They work they work good together. Yeah, true. That's gonna pretty much wrap up the episode. Uh, thank you to everybody for tuning in to a fun episode this week. We had a lot of fun conversating about so many things. Uh, Ziggler, any last words? Yeah, fuck you, Joss Whedon. Heck yeah. And uh, Cam? <laughs> uh... Bye. <laughs> and of course, Bye-bye. as <laughs> always, I am your host, Syed, signing off. Peace. Hey, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that video, and make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And click on the channel to check out some more awesome videos, like our movie and wrestling debates, and our interviews with people like the Wrestling Classic and Jordan Jomo from the IGWC. And we are definitely looking into delivering you all some more content in the near future, so definitely be on the lookout for that. And thank you for your support.